All right, welcome to the video on the derivation of the sum and difference identities for cosine and sine. So we're going to begin by drawing a, a picture of our unit circle. All right, so on our unit circle here, we're going to call the origin here O, the point O, and then this point out here we're going to call P, uh, and it's got ordered pair 1, comma 0 because it's the unit circle, and the distance from the origin uh, to the spot on the unit circle is 1. Then we're going to uh, draw an angle. We're going to call this angle B. So angle B gives us an ordered pair out here on the unit circle that we're going to call point Q. And it has ordered pair cosine B, comma sine B, right, just from the definition of the trig functions from a few videos back. Right, so now we're going to put on a second angle. We're going to call this angle A, right, always over here angle A. And that's going to give us a point on the unit circle that we're going to call point S. And it has ordered pair cosine A, comma sine A, again, uh, from the definition of the trig functions from a few videos back. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put in a third angle in here where we go angle A, and then we're going to take B away. If this is angle B, right, we're going to come all the way over to angle A and then come back angle B right inside here, and that gives us this new angle right, that's in blue called A minus B. No, it's not perfectly to scale, but you, you get the idea. All this is angle A, then subtract off whatever B was, and that leaves you this new angle here on the blue line, and we're going to call that angle A minus B. That will give you a point on the unit circle that we're going to call R. And it has an ordered pair cosine A minus B, comma, sine of A minus B. This blue right here angle is angle A minus B. And in addition, though, what if we said, well, all of this is angle A, all the way over to the orange. But instead of taking B off this way, giving us the blue line, let's take B off over here from the x-axis. If we take this off, then that's going to leave us the angle S, O, Q. Everybody see that right there? That angle right there. What's that angle? If you start with A, all the way over here to orange is A, you know, from the green line all the way over to A, and then you take off this B right here, then that leaves you this new angle, which brilliantly enough is going to be called what? It's also A minus B. So, the blue angle is A minus B, and the angle between the red line and the orange line is also A minus B. They're the same angle. Okay, that's important uh, to realize. All right, so how does that play into it? Well, since we're on the unit circle here, these points that we have can make um, what are called chords. Okay, and so there's a chord that goes from point R to point P. So that chord right there is what's opposite angle A, this blue A minus B, and it's called chord R P. But then there's also this other chord that's between S and Q, and S and Q has a certain distance, and R and P have a certain distance. And what do you th know about those two distances? If we know that this angle here is A minus B, and this angle between the red and the orange is also A minus B. Well then these distances, these two chords, RP and SQ, have to be the same length, because we're all sitting out here on the unit circle. All these distances here is one. Okay, the, the red, the, the red, the blue, and the orange, all those distances are one. All right, so then we know that RP, chord RP, notation for chord RP, has to equal the chord SQ, just because the angle opposite those chords um, are, the, are the same. They're A minus B. All right, so what's the length of chord RP? Well, you've got a point R and a point P, it's pretty easy to figure out the distance between two points, right, using the distance formula, and the same idea between S and Q, use the distance formula for S and Q. When you do that, you look something like the following, okay? We've got cosine A minus B minus 1. That would be the X value minus the other X value squared. This is strictly from the distance formula. If you do not remember the distance formula, then you need to go refresh your memory on that. Then plus the sine of a minus b, this y value for r, minus the y value for p, would be sine of a minus b minus 0 squared. So all of this represents this distance <coughs> between r and p. Right? Well, that's going to equal the distance between s and q. Well, the distance between s and q is the square root of cosine a 
minus cosine b. The x value of s minus the x value of q would be this thing right here, squared, plus the y value of s sine a minus the y value of q sine b squared. So the distance rp looks like this, the distance sq looks like this. But you follow me? Looks ugly because you got all the cosines and a's and b's and stuff running around, but it's really just the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, the distance formula from way back when. Okay? All right, now we're going to do nothing but a bunch of algebra. All right, so we can square both sides to get rid of the square root. And then what do we have inside here? We have the cosine of a minus b minus 1, and all of that is squared. Well, that's really just a binomial squared. Right? That really means cosine a minus b minus 1 times the cosine of a minus b minus 1. And then we're just going to multiply that out. Okay? So don't, don't, let that, don't let that freak you out. That's all we're going to do. All right, so when we get our next line, it looks like the following. Cosine a minus b minus 1, quantity squared, goes to cosine squared of a minus b minus 2 times cosine of a minus b plus 1. So these first three terms right here come strictly from the cosine of a minus b minus 1 squared. And that's just multiplying that binomial squared out. And then what do we have over here? <coughs> well, we have the sine of a minus b minus 0. Well, that's just the sine of a minus b. And then we're going to square that, and so that's where this plus sine squared of a minus b is coming from. So this part right here is just coming from this part. All right, then equals. And now we have the cosine of a minus the cosine of b. Well, again, this is a binomial squared. So write this as cosine a minus cosine b times cosine a minus cosine b. Right? And then just multiply it out. When you do that, you get cosine squared a minus 2 cosine a cosine b plus cosine squared b. Right, and do the same thing with this last binomial squared, sine a minus sine b squared. Rewrite that as sine a minus sine b times sine a minus sine b, and then multiply those two binomials together, and you'll get your um, sine squared minus 2 sine a sine b plus sine squared b. So all of this blue goes to all this mess in red. Right? It looks scary, but it's really nothing but a bunch of algebra. And if you just go off some scratch paper and write it down, and multiply it all out, you'll see where all this stuff in red is coming from. Okay, so now we can do a little combining of terms. For example, cosine a minus cosine squared a minus b and sine squared a minus b. These two things right here, what do they go to? Well, if you add them up, you get one. Because cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one from one of our identities that we had in a previous video. So that goes to one. You've got another one over here. So the 1 plus 1 is 2, and then you've got minus 2 cosine a minus b. Everybody see that? Okay, it's the same idea that's going to happen on the right side. All right, so this left side goes to 2 minus 2 cosine a minus b. And then the right side, well, you've got cosine squared a and plus sine squared a. Well, that goes to 1, these two. And then you've also got cosine squared b plus sine squared b. Those also go to 1, so 1 plus 1 gives you 2, that's where this 2 is coming from. And then you've got minus 2 cosine a cosine b, and then minus 2 sine a sine b left over. All right, so we can subtract 2 from both sides, and then we can divide both sides by negative 2 to give us the following. Cosine a minus b equals cosine a cosine b plus the sine a sine b. This is our identity for the cosine of a minus b. So now we know this is true, we can use it. So for example, we know that cosine a plus b is equal to the cosine of a minus negative b, because a plus b is the same thing as a minus negative b. Then we can use this identity that we have up here. right? So that goes to cosine a times the cosine of negative b, because right? your second angle here now is negative b, plus the sine of the first angle, a, times the sine of the second angle, which is negative b. And that's going to leave you, well, cosine a, and then cosine of negative b. Well, f recall that cosine is an even function, and uh, the cosine of negative b is the same thing as the cosine of b. right? And then sine of negative b. Well, sine is an odd function, so the sine of negative b is actually the same thing as negative sine of b. And so you get this negative 1 that's sitting out here, which changes this to a minus. So minus sine a sine b. 
and this would be our second identity, but this would be the one for the cosine of a plus b. And don't let all this, all the a's and b's kind of freak you out. Really all this is saying is the cosine of, of um, two angles added together is the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. That's really all that's saying. Because you're really not going to have a's and b's running around, you're going to have other angles, right? Okay. All right, let's move on to um, uh, sum of difference for sine. All right, recall that sine of theta is the same thing as cosine shifted, right? So like cosine pi over 2 minus theta. All right, those two things are equal, right? So we're going to use that here. So we've got the sine of a plus b, a plus b being our angle. Well, that should be the same thing as cosine of pi over 2 minus that angle, a plus b. Which we'll put a little, there we go. Cosine pi over 2 minus our angle a plus b. All right, well, now we can do a little um, algebra. Cosine of pi over 2 minus a plus b, you know, distribute the negative 1 through, you get pi over 2 minus a minus b, and then we're going to group them as pi over 2 minus a. We want to group all that together, so we have parentheses, and then minus the b. So now we've rewritten sine of a plus b as the cosine of pi over 2 minus a, all that angle, minus the second angle b. Everybody see that? First angle, second angle. And then we can use our <coughs> previous identity and go, that's the cosine of the first angle, it, pi over 2 minus a, times the cosine of the second angle, plus sine of the first angle, times sine of the second angle, b. Everybody cool with me on that? That's just coming straight, the green thing here is just coming straight from the identity that we had on the previous screen. So now we can say, all right, well, what's the cosine of pi over 2 minus a? Well, that's just a shift, right? Going back up here to our... Um, recall of our identity here in black, cosine of pi over 2 minus a should be the same thing as just the sine of a. So cosine pi over 2 minus a goes to sine a times cosine b plus, same idea here, sine of pi over 2 minus a goes to cosine a and then times the sine of b, right? So we're using those, some previous, previous knowledge to go from the green line to the blue line. But this is our third identity. This is the sum of two angles for sine. The sine of two angles added together is the same thing as the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. Right? And now that we have this identity, we can do the difference one. Sine of a minus b is the same thing as the sine of a plus negative b. And now we can use this identity right above it and say alright that means the sine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle second angle being negative b plus cosine of the first angle a times sine of the second angle negative b and then we use the fact that cosine is an even function so cosine of negative b is the same thing as cosine b so sine a cosine b and then sine of negative b is an odd function so that's going to go to negative the sine of b and which is going to change this positive here into a negative because there'd be a negative one right so that goes to minus cosine a sine b so the sine of the difference of two angles is the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle right so let's summarize all right so the sum of difference identities the cosine of the sum of two angles Right, goes to the cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle minus sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. All right, and then sine of um, uh, the sum of two angles, you get the sine cosine plus cosine sine. All right, so everybody kind of notice here. We've got we've got a couple things to uh, keep in mind. Cosine of the sum, or the cosine of the difference, but they both go cosine cosine sine sine. Follow me? Cosine cosine sine sine. Whereas sine, right, the two sine identities go sine, cosine, cosine, sine. They alternate. So that's one way that might can help you keep them straight as opposed to what identity goes with what. So you can remember the identities. Another thing we notice is that sine of a plus b and the sine of a minus b, th there are two signs, whether it's a, an addition or a subtraction, they carry over into the identity, right? You got a plus here for, this, for the uh, sum, and we've got a minus here for the difference of two angles. But for the cosine ones, they're the opposite. So if it's the cosine of a plus b, then you're going to be doing a subtraction between the two um, parts. And if it's um, the cosine of a minus b, then we're going to be doing an addition between the two parts. Right? So you've got to find some way to keep those in mind um, so we uh, don't mess up the sign, which is obviously easy to do. All right, so those are the four um, identities. Uh, from there, we could get two more, the tangent ones. From these four up here, 
you can derive 5 and 6. I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you guys to figure out. All right, so that's it for the derivation of the sum of difference identities. Make sure you see uh, the video um, where you have several examples on using them. All right, that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.